Uh, welcome everybody to uh, the week four review or retro. Um, if this is your first retro, firstly, thank you for being here. I know it's a weird thing to do after a quiz, but if you think about it, it's a very sensible thing to do after a quiz. Um, we've done a lot of, uh, we've covered a lot of ground in our, uh, in every set that we've done in the quiz league so far. And it makes sense to sort of go over the questions again. As an added bonus this time around, we have brought extra questions for you. So every single quad that you're looking at, not every single quad, but I, I think nine of the 15 quads that you're going to look at today will have an extra question. So now you have an excuse when you miss a question in today's oh, nine. So, uh, okay, we can get started right away. Um, we'll, uh, the format will be simple. We'll be going quad by quad. I'll pick somebody out to, to attempt the four questions or five questions in this case. Um, we'll stick to a six minute, uh, 60 minute timeline. So we don't go over. And I think we can start. Uh, this is how the quads played. Um, you can see that the hardest one was 12th Night Traditions, which is uh, largely due to that uh, chalking the door question about okay. uh, what's that 12th Night Tradition. Um, we'll see the numbers when we get to it, but that was a, that was a tough quad in any in any definition. Floodlights for night, night games kind of makes sense. All of them were very popular stadiums that we talked about. Two of them were cricket stadiums. So uh, <laughs> it's going to be a slightly easier quad. Uh, let's start first with uh, nighttime photography. We had only one uh, person even getting three out of four, which normally means that this was a slightly easier than usual uh, quad, multiple easy questions, but MMD managed to uh, get a musket anyway. Uh, Mahindra, are you here? No, he's not. Okay. In that case, Subhajit, you are attempting these questions. First question for you. Uh, this nighttime photo, which I will zoom a little better was taken by the Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield from the ISS. The difference in the color of the lights on the left and right sides of the picture is attributed to mercury arc lamps and sodium vapor lamps, respectively. Which city is this, which is still unable to harmonize its street lamps 33 years after a particular event? This is not correct only. This is Berlin, uh, Berlin and the fall of Berlin Wall. Yes, correct. You can, you can see very clearly uh, that there's uh, white lights on this side of this line and yellow lights on the other side. Um, second question, uh, I just saw, I should have asked this earlier, but, uh, just to get a general, just at what point did you guys notice that there was a theme? Cause that's generally the thing that I'm looking forward to when I'm reading a quiz, a theme set at around how deep inside would you say you were, uh, when you realized that there was a theme? So five questions. So for me today. So for me. Uh, for me today, we did not even realize that there oh, is a yeah, theme yeah. in our game. For <laughs> me, maybe like a one round, I, one round a year. I realized like. <laughs> With about four or five questions to go in the whole set. I actually, yeah. so because we were worried that this might happen, we did something uh, this time around. Um, it's if you take the score sheet and put a certain message in it, then I'm going to have to run through the entire quiz. This is the idea <laughs> where everybody gets everybody right. Um, but once you reach the end, there is a message that pops up. Uh, that means if you enjoyed this after dark maybe <laughs> and unfortunately you're, it's a blind spot so it's like an ad you you would never look there because you know nothing yeah. useful ever appears in this place so I think a lot of people managed to not notice the theme in spite of this uh, but but yeah any any very early spotters anybody noticed with just the night mode did anybody yeah, just I, see I night did it after like five or six questions because of the night mode I was like why night mode yeah, yeah that was weird actually I so, think, I think uh, it's the first time I've seen night mode on I think there were three questions uh, continuously about nights. Like there was a book by, I, I think we'll cover it. Continuously about night, I think. No, like very specifically the okay, answers. Okay, about night specifically. Okay. Yeah. So I think I got that. Like it has to do with night. Good. Uh, in in one in at least one game, I think Priyank was reading, um, and he was asked by the players, "Okay, listen, I don't like night mode. Can you switch back?" And the poor guy had to because you you know the quiz matters more, so he had to switch back to light mode just to finish the quiz. Okay, uh, second question for Subhiji. The Atlantic seaboard of the US is one of the most recognizable features on the Earth to be spotted by a NASA astronaut from the ISS. The high density extends from Philadelphia on the bottom left till Hartford in the top right, passing through New York City. Which highway can you see here? It's the main road artery of the eastern seaboard. I-95. Okay, that's correct. I have, si I have since learned a lot more about this. Uh, apparently, um, US highways are numbered um, fairly logically. They're numbered from west to east. So west yeah. would be in lower numbers, east would be uh, higher numbers. North, north. And uh, odd and even dictates whether it's north, south, yeah. or east-west. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. So true. in California, the equivalent highway is I-5. Ah, okay. Yeah. 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 yeah all <laughs> the five and the tens are the more major ones. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, so, Vijay, question for you. Istanbul is a splendid site at night, as can be seen here. Uh, this is a common question. I'll just jump through it. What strait is this? It, uh, it comes from the ancient Greek word for cow strait. Bosporus strait. It is the Bosporus strait. And your fourth question uh, What geographic entity occupies this circular dark patch? Mount Vesuvius. That's correct. If you see the word catastrophic in a quiz question, it obviously means volcano. Yeah. There is no yeah. other. Catastrophe, catastrophe that happens. And your new question for today, I think. Yeah. What stretch is this as seen from the ISS at night? The lights clearly demonstrate the geographical choices dictate that the population concentration. Mm -hmm. Okay, the typos are clearly not fixed since this is not a light quiz, but uh, make of that what you will. What stretch is this can be seen from the ISS? I should probably get answers. Is, open. It the, is it the diamond line or the diamond highway from you in the Cairo to, I don't know, below? You've got, the, you've got the right part of the world, but uh, somebody else said it. Rishi, do you say? This is the Nile. Nile. Yeah, Nile. Yeah, Nile. Yeah. Nile. Yeah. 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 Simply the Nile, yeah. Try to dwell it. Okay. Um, oh, this was the bonus. Yeah, uh, uh, not all the quads will have. Some quads will have the bonuses. So, we'll do that. Uh, I-95 was the only really hard one here. Everything was mostly even uh, in this court. For historic yeah. nightclubs, uh, if anybody wants to volunteer, please volunteer. Neto, I will throw the questions at Achut. I can. Who is that? Please tell me your name. Abhishek. 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 First question for you. Among the stars of Berlin's hip nightlife scene is a no holds barred club known for its fetish and sexual theme started by a porn photographer. What app name is it known by, inspired from a frivolous nightclub that is central to the plot of an award winning musical set in the Berlin Jazz Age? These names are in turn derived from an 18th century London liberal society. Is it, uh, this one is Kit Kat? Yes, correct. It's Kit Kat Club. Yeah, very Second question. The story of how this entertainment form got its name is a long one. Uh, it's from a movie called Whiskey Galore, which had a different title when it moved to French. A historic nightclub in Paris took its name from the French version of the film, and that's where this style of entertainment was born. And the boots are also named after the dance. What are we talking about? Go-go, mm, go-go boots. Yes, correct. This was whiskey or go-go and then go-go boots and go-go dancing. Your third question. Uh, take a look at this still and just tell me which video it's from. Um, the location is also the place of uh, three of the top 10 nightclubs in the world. Ibiza. Ibiza, right? Going to Ibiza. Since we already used this, I don't think we can use it again. So I'll just tell you the... Uh, the Ibiza music video seems to be a pretty good mind for questions. Someday you will see it in a quad, probably not in this league. But if you see it in another league and you get points, let me know. Question for uh, Abhishek again. The Hacienda was a historic nightclub that became popular during the Manchester years in the 70s and 80s, launching the careers of bands such as Oasis and Chemical Brothers. The club was financed by the proceeds from the 1983 hit Blue Monday. Who sang that song? Yeah, so quite... This is a uh, new order joy division. That's correct. Yeah. And your new question coming up. Oh. One of the most expensive and exclusive nightclubs in this capital city is the MN Roy, named for Bengali revolutionary Manabindra Nath Roy, Nath Roy, who is famously associated with his work in that part, particular part of the world, thousands of miles away from his homeland. In which capital city in the Americas would you find the MN Roy nightclub? I guess Mexico City. You are right. This is Mexico City. Oh, nice. Superb. <laughs> COVID dancing turned out to be harder than New Order. Significantly harder, actually. Oh, yeah. Only 11 answers. Hey, that's crazy. Hmm. I was quite surprised with that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It is our frivolous squad for the week. This is uh, four questions on the 90. Any, any volunteers? Okay. Rishi, question is for you. Reportedly inspired by the Jalabiya one in the Arab region, what form of sleepwear? You are correct. It is the 90. <laughs> Every time somebody answered this, it was unsurely, it was in hesitant tones. Mm. Can't possibly be 90, but you're making me say it. So is it 90? And then you get to give them points for it. It's I actually good. got this wrong. Oh, huh? okay. What did you say? Maxi. Sorry? I said Maxi. Maxi, okay. Well, letters wouldn't have fit though. No. Yeah, yeah. And so I went for plural thinking the plural would fit. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. M H I E S. Rishi, what does Obishopto mean? Uh yeah, I think shopt is the operator word that I caught onto and I just said cursed. And then it also looked like a horror movie. So 
ಫಾರ್ಮಲ್ವೇರ್ಟ್ಟ In the MCU series Moon Knight, the titular character is an avatar and derives his power from which ancient Egyptian god. This god is shown to help Moon Knight by manipulating the night sky to show what stars looked like 2,000 years ago. Uh, Khonshu. Khonshu is right. Now, Floyd and I, oh, Floyd's on this call as well. Floyd and I believe that this is actually not that difficult, but it has re- barely been answered in, in the entire week. People have not gotten this at all. In spite of quite a lot of people having watched Moon Knight, uh, this is yes. just, yeah. so, somehow it doesn't seem to be a very memorable name. So, yeah, which is what I was surprised by. Like, I, I was like, if you watch Moon Knight, like, you would, you'd definitely remember. No, Moon yeah, Knight. that thing. No, I, I could remember everything about Moon Knight. I could remember the voice actor, but I could not remember this. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that's what happened to many people. Yeah. yeah. Question for AP again. Archaeologist Hugo Winkler was the first to associate which term for God with an ancient Arabian deity called Hubal, whom he called a lunar deity. The association came about because a statue of Hubal existed at a highly significant location, now considered the house of God by the followers of this religion. This theory has been refuted by several scholars. Yeah, so this is Allah, but I'd never, never was, I was nowhere close to the answer. You were nowhere never close to Ah, okay, okay. Like in the quiz. Yeah, you know, third question in this duo theistic syncretic religion there are two main worship deities the horned god and the triple moon goddess the latter represents aspects of a female life including maiden mother and crone which new religious movement or form of western mysticism is this introduced by a british civil servant in 1954 i forgot this i think it is um, what um, vaku No. Can I answer oh, for it? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's, let's do this right. Uh, AP, do you have an answer? No. No? Okay. Uh, he almost so has I, an answer. Uh, yeah. Actually, but... Blanco or something. Yeah, you, you're almost there. I mean, I, I feel like yeah. on a nice quiz we would give that. So this is, this is Vika. Yeah. Yeah. Vika, yeah. The most popular wrong guess over here was Kabbalah, which is not a bad guess. It's a, a form of Western mysticism and whatnot. Vika was... Civil servant is the Crowley, right? I don't know. No, Dhruv, if you're here, could you not answer? Not 1954. Sorry? I don't Sorry. think he was alive in 1954, right? Alistair Crowley. It must be after. Mm-hmm. Gerard Gardner, that's the... Okay. Thanks. No, I think Crowley is Satanism something, no? Yeah, Crowley yeah, is also al- alive around that time, but I think it's something different. Oh. His religion. Yeah. Okay. Question for AP again. Devi Rati is a Hindu goddess worshipped mainly in Java and Bali. This is a very fun question. It's a great origin story. Um, so, a, a Kala Rao is chasing Devi Rati. Kala Rao has survived a beheading with just his floating head because he has consumed a portion of immortality that has just reached his throat. So, he consumes Devi mm-hmm. Rati and then she appears again out of his thro- out of his neck because he does not have a body. This is the origin of what natural occurrence? Uh, this is a lunar eclipse. That's correct. So, you're looking for something that disappears and then reappears since she appears out of her neck. So, It's a nice way of... Uh, I felt so bad for the person in my game because they said solar eclipse. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, same. 
same we are seeing our game somebody uh, drew, uh, Divya so, said eclipse and then sort of prompt this whole solar eclipse and, and then then there was yeah. the night sky like night yeah. sky was uh, written out there so solar eclipse like if everybody watching. who said eclipse and stopped knew what they were doing they were hoping for a prompt they got one and they paid prompt so. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Question. I just felt bad to just then take it saying Luna. <laughs> Do we have a bonus? No, we do not. So we'll move on. Um, this is what happened in this squad. Uh, Luna Ooh. Clips actually played fairly yeah. easily. Ah. Hmm. Vika was Vika and the other one was so, so yeah, very similar. Actually, yeah. actually Fanshu and Vika are not that much difference. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nobody's done particularly well in this. Uh, Pat, do you want to try this? Okay. 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 First question for you. While some novels are set over just one day, even fewer are set over one night, which Chuck Palahniuk novel with a one-word title, not to be confused with the Terry Pratchett novel of the same name, is set on a night when legendary porn star Cassie Wright attempts to break the world record for serial fornication on camera. Typical of a Palahniuk novel, while the premise is shocking, the novel eventually turns into an interesting meditation on the adult industry and mother-child relationships. I think this was round one. I fancied snuff, but I was in on a bonus, so I just stayed quiet. Uh, but you are right this time. It is. It is yeah. tough. Mm. Round one. It's it's sometimes hard to go for bonuses on principle. Uh, the excellent guess that I uh, received at some point uh, while uh, reading this game, um, because of the Terry Pratchett <laughs> novel and because of the premise that has been described here, was Dick World. Um, it's a, <laughs> Dick's it's, Dick's World. <laughs> Dick's World. It's it's an excellent uh, 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 joke. However, got cracked four times in the games that I read. Um, it turns out not as uh, not as innovative <laughs> as I thought. Right. Second, second question for Pat. After Dark is a novel about a college student who was out all night in Tokyo and runs into some interesting people, including a Chinese-speaking prostitute, the owner of a love motel, a shady businessman, and more, who penned this work in 2007. But forget all that. Just tell me who wrote 1 hmm. to 84. Haruki Murakami. Is right. So that's what I didn't. So this question had a beautiful premise, a lot of the Vivek mm. did your kind of story, and then you say one two eighty four, which is just giving yeah. us the answer. You you generally know why that happened? No, like you can guess why that happened. It's yeah, a, it's, 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 it's below, below level question. It's a leveling, yeah. So it's a leveling thing. It's it it could have been done more elegantly, but it's normally there because it has to be made easier than it is. So. Okay. Mm. Question for Pat. Night of Nights by Ian S. Lemont is set on the night of the shadow moon when an ancient prophecy is believed to come true. It is set in which fantasy universe? This is some awkward phrasing. I will explain this. Uh, it is set in which fantasy universe originally conceived by Stephen Erickson, starting with his novel, Gardens of the Moon? I've forgotten what the answer is. Uh, I didn't uh, answer it in real time, and I, I'm not answering it now. Passes to issue. This is uh, Malazan. Malazan is right. I was wondering if uh, Santosh Murthy got it at some point. I, I haven't uh, checked. I'm, I've since been told, so it's been answered fairly rarely. We'll see in a minute. But uh, the I one person I did, the yeah. one person I met who who had actually read these books, um, didn't get points for it because he read which fantasy universe. Correct. The the series. Uh, Kiran, maybe you could tell us about this. So basically, this is the series is set in the. It's a series of ten books uh, plus the four by Ian Esselmont, which follow the exploits, as it were, of the Malazan Empire and all their conquests across the entire world. That world, which is this fantasy universe, is called Wu, W-U. Okay. It's so, not Malazan. But the series is very popular as the Malazan Books of the Fallen. So, yeah, you can get so, that. So, when you say which fantasy universe, we obviously mean this in the sense of Harry Potter universe. Mm -hmm. So, which universe? Uh, Malazan. Mm -hmm. But it, but if you're a fan, then you would read this as, oh, you mean Wizarding World. Okay. So, then what it's actually called is Wu. And uh, and yeah, so because of mm. awkward framing, somebody who's actually a really devout fan would actually get this wrong. Uh, oh, <laughs> yo, I had one de devout fan in one of the games I read who missed yeah. this question because he was like, "No, nah, I couldn't get Malazan from this." And, and trust me, that person would have been way angrier if there was anybody else reading that quiz. But fortunately, it was Kiran, and you can't be very angry <laughs> if Kiran's <laughs> reading your quiz. I so. don't. I'll take that as a compliment. Okay. <laughs> Uh, fourth question for Pat. Uh, Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist is a 2006 novel about events of a single night by Rachel Korn and David Levinson, which was adapted two years later as a hit rom-com movie. The name of the two title characters are a reference to Nick and Nora Charles, the protagonists of which 1934 detective novel by Dashiell Hammett, also adapted into a hit movie the same year. The book and film gave their name to the series of films that follow. The Thin Man. That's right. And we do finally have a bonus question again. This one is for Pat. 
Barring the last couple of pages, which shows the titular character turn over a new leaf, the entire novel is set over one night. One special night, in fact, featuring the past, the present, and yet to come. Name this 1843 work. Sounds like a Christmas carol. It is a Christmas carol. Yep. <laughs> okay, let's see how Malan did. Malan got 10 answers, even fewer for Snuff. So Snuff was harder somehow for you than, than Malazan. Mm. Oh, and at this point, if I may, if you haven't read the Malazan series yet, please go read it. It's an awesome, awesome, awesome series. It is George R. R. Martin on Coke and uh, <laughs> driving at 300 miles per hour. Awesome stuff. Nice. Uh, we'll start Nocturnal Animals. Um, who wants to join Rishi for this? Any volunteers? I'll do it. Kiran is joining. Not Kirtan, Kiran. Uh, <laughs> Kiran, all wings have a comb of bristles along their leading edge and a fringe on the trailing edge that help break up air turbulence. This gives the nocturnal owl an advantage as it approaches its prey, effectively acting as blank. Uh, all cars have this feature too, of course, but they operate in a different way. These are silencers. It's a great funda, I think. Like, yeah. Uh, but for, uh, uh, when I got this, it took me a while to actually say this because I wasn't sure that the same term could be applied in both the automotive world and the natural world. Ah, okay. So you you you'd want what would you use in the natural world if you had to mute it or something? Hmm. Effectively ah, acting as na. So my first case was aileron or something like that, but then I was like, no, it doesn't make sense. The words also didn't fit. So because I I, I just can't think of silencers being used in the natural world for for a wing in particular. Yeah, yeah. And for that, uh, the um, the US term is mufflers, so they don't use silencers then. Something oh, okay. would have got tripped up. So mufflers, I think, should have been an like an alternate answer. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So mufflers are an alternate term for fast silencers, right? Eh? Yeah, it's the US okay. term for silencers. Yeah, in the silencers. in the automotive context. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, question for Mufflers. here: the Creatures like leopards, eyes, night jars, etc., have a layer of tissue called the tapetum lucidum, which bends light back. Depending on the creature's angle of, angle of reflection and the amount of light, the color may vary. This reflective membrane in a certain part of their body gives the, these creatures a specific advantage as well as a visible feature. Name either the advantage or the feature. This is the night vision. That's correct. Most people end up getting points by describing this. Yeah. I, in fact, I, I was yeah, telling I, the people when I said, I just said, get, get verbose. If I hear the answer in what you're saying, I'll give you the points. And... I got a, a ten sentence answer once, and I finally got the answer from that. <laughs> you, you you do this, but you 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 need to run into exactly one Avinash Kotori who will hear you do this and will try, you know, narrating an entire essay. He'll say all the words, and you can't possibly not give him points by your definition. Then, so, <laughs> that's like mixing Mimir and Taboo together. Right. If you start opening yourself to this amount of gaming, people will try to game you. So, <laughs> question for Kina. <laughs> While most animals are either diurnal or nocturnal, some have adapted to be most active at the end of the day when temperatures are lower, but there are enough, but there is enough light to seek out food. Bobcats, possums, and some rabbits, and even some owl species are examples. What word from the Latin for twilight is used to describe such creatures? I knew this word, but I didn't apply it to animals. I knew it as a word that is applied to rays of sun, rays of the sun at twilight. So it's crepuscular rays. But mm. I knew it as rays of sun at twilight. I didn't know it was applied to animals. So nice question. Really nice question. It's Very it's good. a it's it's a obscure word that resides in a lot of people's subconscious. And, and if you're able to pull it out somehow, it's a very cool achievement. Because exactly. you're definitely using it after years. Yes, yes. yes. Mm. Unless you live a very unusual life. <laughs> question. <laughs> uh, given the similar features, it makes sense that a lamp shares its etymology with lampiridae. The scientific name for this nocturnal creature, it is actually a beetle, but its name references another insect. It is also apt that the creature does its thing by burning oxygen with a chemical called luciferin in its belly. Which creature is this, which shares its name with the sci-fi series that ran for one season in 2002? Mm -hmm. That last one is enough to get it, it's fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The amount of petition that goes on like everywhere. Still. Still hey, but seriously, Firefly is worth it. Yeah, it's really, really yeah. nice. Uh, One of the best. And uh, I learned a lot of very interesting Chinese swear words from that series. Yeah. <laughs> mm. okay. uh, for Nocturne paintings, as you can see, quite a lot of people did unusually well at this. Uh, Thing is here. Uh, Jing, do you want to take this? Yeah. Uh, firstly, congratulations for the musket. Four musketeers in this. Uh, Arun Dibanjan, Saurav, and Jing. Uh, Jing, question for you. Nocturne painting is a term coined by which American artist to describe a style evocative of the night? 
he used this musical term in naming the work shown here, Nocturne in Black and Gold, just as he had used the musical term arrangement in the title of one of his more famous works. It's Whistler. Whistler, right? What's the original name of the of Whistler's mother? A regiment in black and gray. In gray and black. Green. Number one, mm. number one also. Mm. Uh, question, nice. Jing. One of the earliest European artists to paint nocturnes regularly was Rembrandt, known for his renowned for his use of light and shade. His painting Militia Company of District Two, under the command of Captain Franz Bannik Koch depicts the company moving out, led by the captain who commissioned it. What is this painting commonly known as? Night Watch. It is Night Watch. I only got this one because I remembered reading a book long, long ago where it was the entire book's uh, plot centered around the theft of this painting. So there was the he went into great detail about this painting and I ended up knowing way more than I liked to about the painting. Yeah, the, somebody just mentioned in the chat that this is a another Terry Pratchett reference. I suppose it is. This is the second Terry Pratchett uh, ah, that is sort of question because of that much. <laughs> Unintentional. Um, question for Jing again. This is Ein Kreis, which I have been pronouncing differently for every game that I read on the off chance that one of them is correct. A nocturne painting <laughs> by which Russian pioneer of abstract art, showing an enlarged moon over the miniature city below. It is emblematic of his style while lecturing at the Bauhaus Art School. His affection for circles is well known with works like Circle in a Circle and Several Circles. Kandinsky. Yes, correct. Can you also teach me how to say this? Um, I Ein Kreis. 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 On the left is Starry Night, on the right is Starry Night over the blank. Fill in the blank with the name of a river which flows between France and Switzerland. So wrong. Wrong, it's right. Yes. And we have a bonus, a bonus question for you, Jing. Nice. Which painter's work called The Empire of Light is notable for its depiction of a blue cloudy sky on top, but a dark street lit neighborhood at the bottom? In this regard, it is both a night painting and yet not typical of the artist's provocative approach. Instinctively, I went till the top right to start the timer, but there is no timer, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not sure about this one. Mm. This is, uh, oh, sorry. Hopper. I'm sorry, say again? Edward Hopper. Not Hopper, Abhishek. Abhishek and Pat. I think it's Magritte. Uh, it's it, yeah. it is Magritte. Yeah, Magritte. Oh, yeah, yeah. The cloud oh, is like another. The cloud is there. Oh, does the cloud tell you it's Magritte? How, how do you do that? Yeah. The same yeah, cloud is in some of his other paintings. Yeah, he yeah. has that, that face yeah, is a pink cloud. Oh, that's I awesome. was looking for a line which said, this is not a cloud, then I would have guessed Magritte. <laughs> 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 nice one. Okay, uh, who's attempting floodlights for night games are either Nayan yeah, or Naveen Nayan. on the call. Nayan's here, great. Yeah. Hi. Firstly, congratulations on your musket. Uh, oh, first question. The first international football game played under floodlights was in 1955 when the home, home team of England defeated the visiting Spain 4-1. In which iconic stadium, more recognizable for his arch, did this happen? Uh, Wembley. That's right. Your second question, because of the presence of Chandigarh Airport nearby, which cricket stadium, officially named for IS Pindra, has 16 short floodlight pillars instead of the standard configuration of four tall ones? Uh, it is a Mohali. It is Mohali. And tell me how you managed to answer this. Which sport became the first to be played under floodlights uh, when in 1878, the Ranelagh Club of London hosted another London club, the Hurlingham Club, for a game that lasted eight chuckers? I just knew like chuckers are somewhat related to polo, so I just answered that's, polo. Oh, you knew that's, that? Okay. Same, that's how I yeah. answered. Nothing else in the question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like late, late, 18th, yeah. late 1800s and it's in like London for so polo. If I see Tokyo and novel, I just say Murakami. <laughs> <laughs> Question for now. The floodlights at the Dubai International Cricket Stadium are not on pillars, but instead on the circumference of its rounded roof, thus giving the stadium what nickname that might remind you of the name given to a volcano-prone region girdling the Pacific Ocean. Um, the Ring of Fire. Yes, Could I push, put some Johnny Cash fund down this? Yeah. yeah or, or some Lord of the Rings fund down. There uh, was another question, right? Of, I believe... These are the four, but I have a bonus for you. 
Uh, oh, nice. 200 special titles are laid below the surface of the pitch in this slum in Rio de Janeiro that grabbed headlines in 2014 for its unique floodlights, which operate thanks to a technology called Pav- Pavigin. Yeah. These floodlights get their power almost instantaneously. What generates the power for these floodlights? Is it the movement of the people? of the players which is absolutely right this is pave gen pave ah, okay. gen there we go yeah. pave gen gives it away yeah. there was a question i believe i was thinking that was the part of the cord uh, oh, okay is it, this is all we had in this one though uh, no, 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 fair, everyone did there was a, well. on the whole very high scoring one good yeah yeah a couple they won if i am not wrong Oh yeah, there was a there's a spare. Um, I wonder if I have oh. it right now. Ah, that was a spare. Yes. yes. Oh. I don't. I don't have the thing. But I, the question was, uh, which player has now invested? I think in. Yeah, yeah. In yeah, yeah. He started lights. the company Musco Lighting Private Limited. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for artificial lights, um, anybody volunteering? Shramat, thank you for volunteering. Yeah. Uh, just so you know, Shamat read a game this week, and uh, and completely uh, in character, he decided to do it uh, dressed as a ghost. So he put a blanket oh, over his oh, head. Oh yeah, yeah, you and, and, my and, game. And he read the and he read the game. Uh, yeah. like, nice, nice. nice. <laughs> uh, first question for you, Shamat. Global dimming is a phenomenon observed since the 1950s that sees reduced amounts of solar radiance reaching the Earth due due to climate change. While there have, while there has been an improvement recently, which 1991 geological event in Asia is said to have majorly contributed to global dimming. Creating an artificial night for the terrified people in the vicinity of the event. So, is the Pina two was your option? It's correct. Question for Shaman again. Canonical gospels like Mark and Luke have described this artificial night in similar ways. Uh, Mark fifteen thirty three says it was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. Which event, generally dated to thirty three CE, lends its name to this artificial night known as blank darkness? Crucifixion. Right in a game that Shaman thread, somebody knew uh, as much as death of Jesus Christ, but unfortunately could not fill in the blank. So it happened in my game too. Yeah. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I, I, I like I kept prompting them twice or thrice, and then I was like, no, bro, I can't give it to you anymore. And then oh, after yeah. prompting, if they finally get it, you can be like nailed it. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, question for Shamat. The ninth in the series of ten was a command from God to, jo- to Moses to hold his hand to the sky and cause an artificial night to uh, to descend upon a certain land for three days, thus depriving its people of daylight so as to cure emancipation for its people, the Israelites. What was the series of ten from the book of Exodus? So glad I watched the Prince of Egypt. This is the uh, plagues of Egypt. So the ten <laughs> plagues of Egypt. And your fourth ten question. commandments and Mo- uh, the Moses and ten things gave me a lot of ten commandment answers. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, me too. Yeah. Everybody, everybody gets ten commandments as their first guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, it was I, I, the, the Alan Davy style bells for some reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, this cinematic technique involves the camera team doing things like underexposing the film using neutral density filters, choosing blue or white balancing, all in an attempt to artificially recreate the conditions that it otherwise have to wait hours to get. What is this three-word term? I, I didn't get this, but this is day over night. Day uh, over day for night. Yeah. Day, day for night. 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 Day for clue rather than from the yeah, rest of the thing that's that's yeah. relatively common i think so uh, people yeah. uh, people who have followed or have read francis tucker's mm. wikipedia page for example might have been able to answer that mm. uh, okay uh, the number of guesses for the last uh, last part were like so like in sync number is 168 168 168 168 168 uh yeah okay. Okay. this includes passes as well yeah yeah he wrongs So everybody, it it counts the number of players who had an attempt to take a shot at it. Okay, got it, got it. So whether okay. you pass, you get it right, or you get it wrong, those are the possible actions. But if you had it in front of you, then that counts. Okay. So one, since there's no bonus here, I just thought I'd ask. Initially, uh, one of the the levels in uh, questions in this was a question to which the answer was eclipse, which we changed because there's a, a so a lunar eclipse question uh, in hmm. the. 
entities. So your question is, which Tintin novel was at the heart of that initial question before it was scrapped? Oh, Prisoners of the Sun. Yeah, Prisoners Correct. of the Sun. Correct. Nice. The artificial light that he causes to descend upon them. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, uh, next word is Dark Matter. It is a science seek word. Who's, who's taking it? Nobody? I can go. I can do it. Achut has okay, heard Achut. I heard Achut first. So. Akshay, is, Akshay is there on the list also. Okay, yeah. fine. Akshay is here. Akshay is here. Akshay. Okay, first question for Akshay. The Lambda CDM model accounts for the four most important facts about the universe, cosmic microwave background, the abundance of hydrogen, helium, and lithium, the large-scale structure of the distribution of the galaxies, and the accelerating expansion of the universe. If Lambda is the cosmological constant and C stands for cold, what does the DM stand for? Dark Dark matter. Second question. Several alternate theories have been proposed. One of them is MOND. If the MO stands for modified and it is a modification of the law of universal gravitation, then what does the ND stand for? Newtonian dynamics. That's correct. Do we have anybody here who got to Newtonian but couldn't do dynamics? Is that I, got, I had a... I think when both my quizzes, uh, it happened. That they were either able to identify Newton but uh, mm -hmm. were not able to get dynamics. My guess was non-linear dynamics, and that was wrong. Also, because of the placement of the question, uh, and because dark matter has gone by, so non-dark matter was also a common guess. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Question for One class of particles that is considered a candidate for dark matter is that of blanks. Uh, these are large hypothetical particles that interact very weakly with ordinary matter and radiation, neither emitting or absorbing light. But when they meet each other, then they annihilate and produce gamma rays. What is the abbreviation? It might remind you of a series of children's books by Jeff Keeney. Uh, limp. But now you have to tell me the full form, actually. Right? Weakly interacting massive particles. That's correct. There's another uh, sort of in contrast to this called mar macho, which is massive something. I don't know how it goes. Massively okay. compacted halo objects or something like that. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Question, Raksha, what does Rambo stand for? Give me the whole thing. Oh, that? Uh, I mean, the B was... The no, no, I don't was... want B. I want Rambo. <laughs> Are I don't know. Wait, this B was bad. You only didn't pass to me. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess no. Start plus uh, revolving astronomic. Hey, okay. R is okay. Okay. R is given. It's it's wrong. Oh, it's wrong. wrong. So Abhishek, Pat, and I. <laughs> Robust association, massive baryonic objects. Is correct. Okay, do we have a spare for this? No, we do not. Um, this is how this squad went. So relatively even only. Kind of descending, not bad. Hmm. Movie is an end. Who's trying the adult swim questions? I mean, I read it. I can give you the answers. Uh, that is good enough for me. Adult Swim is an American adult-oriented nighttime cable television channel. This sentence has a lot of adjectives, a lot of qualifiers. Every time you read Correct. it, you think it's going to get over, but it doesn't get over. It's an American adult-oriented nighttime cable television channel that runs from 8 p.m. <laughs> to 6 p.m. in the night only. However, it's this like is the not... It's question from last week. I don't remember that one, but but it, it does happen. So if you, when you're setting, you should ideally be reading it to yourself because that's how the readers are going to be reading it. Uh, if you don't, then you might write a sentence like this. We should have caught this idea. <laughs> Uh, however, this is a not a standalone channel, but a nighttime variant of another of another channel whose usual customers are sleeping. What channel would you need to be on at 8 p.m.? This is Cartoon Network. Great. I, I had people who knew that Cartoon Network turns into something else, but that turns into TNT, not Adult Swim. So that's why they rejected Cartoon Network and tried something else. If I may, yes. it is also very obvious that this question has been set by people most probably who don't have kids because my kids have not slept at 8 p.m. for the last seven <laughs> years. There, there was a confusion over there. Like, who sleeps at 8 p.m.? Yeah. <laughs> I think, any of this adult I think somebody was thinking about a geriatric patient. Like, oh, okay. they probably sleep really quickly. <laughs> yeah, right question. This question was made by Vikas. As far as I can tell, he doesn't have kids. Uh, question for, for Hush. Adult Swim has produced many iconic shows for its nighttime blocks. None more popular than the 2016 show that, that achieved wider audience through Netflix. Originally conceived as a parody for the Back to the Future series, which is a very nice hint, actually. Yeah. Uh, what right. is the show created by Justin Rowland, who also voiced both the eponymous characters? This is Rick and Morty. This is Rick and Morty. Thanks to this question, I won a match in another league. You won a match? Yeah, last question was there for oh. our team league. Nice. 
don't want to name the link it's okay. i mean there aren't that many options to be honest and i feel like yeah, i have a feeling he has revealed which you have benefited us all i think a little <laughs> bit uh question for harsh uh home movies and animated sitcom that launched as a nighttime show on adult swim launched its careers of uh, careers of creators brendan small mm-hmm. and lauren bushard while small created metallocalypse which metallocalypse what show did lauren create that features the adventures of the belcher family who run a titular establishment on ocean avenue in an unnamed locality informally known as seamers bay and this is bobby burgers yeah, right and this uh, small needs to be literally crucified because for naming that show that thing i mean it took me three attempts in both of the quizzes that i Every, had everybody who's read a game this week is probably cursing this cuz it's so hard to say it looks easy to Metallic say but it's so difficult to say metallo calypso metallo think after a couple of games it gets easier but it doesn't i trip up every single time uh question for harsh although it was originally initially conceived as a saturday afternoon program this programming block showcasing japanese anime was converted into a late night program on adult swim in 2012 What is this programming block called? A portmanteau of the original network's name and a Japanese word that was hosted by a robot called Tom. So it starts with a T. Tsunami. Is it? I was very carefully considering between Tsunami and Animatrix, but uh, I think that was more India or Asia specific than. You mean Animax? Animax. Animax. Animax sorry. Yeah. Okay, we have a bonus question. Is for Harsh. The first ever original production on Adult Swim was a comedy late night talk show created by Mike Lazo where a 1960s <laughs> Hanna Barbera character was reimagined as the titular talk show host people are smiling i don't know why uh, subtitled rhymingly as coast to coast what was this show where the host made a talking mantis and a lava headed man do unpaid labor as punishment for crimes on the original series so i'm going to say this beforehand this was a spare question so i know the answer Oh, it was a fair question also. Yes, it okay. is Space Ghost. This is Space, space Ghost. Ghost. Space Ghost goes yeah. to Ghost. So when yeah, Cartoon yeah. Network in India went 24 hours for the first time ever. So Cartoon Network used yeah. to be till 8 yeah. and then it Correct. Correct. pushed till 10 and then it became till uh, it became 24 hours. I think this was one of the first. The post 8 o'clock shows, one. Yeah, this was yeah. one of the first shows that it appeared in the block which was after when it usually is. Yeah. 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 I think Space Ghost used to come after Birdman. Birdman. Birdman, then Space Ghost. Birdman Ghost. became the lawyer. Yeah, Birdman and then Space Ghost used to come. Yeah. Although I still miss TNT. I never actually yeah, was allowed to watch TNT. TNT meant that I couldn't watch anymore. Um, mm-hmm. like sleep, sleep disorders. Who's trying this? I'll no, take I will, this. I will. I will. Uh, who said that? Say your name, please. Uh, Ramsey. 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 Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tom Hanks in a 1993 movie based in Seattle, Seattle, Seattle. Edward Norton as the narrator in a 1999 film. Al Pacino's character in a 2002 film, Set in Alaska, all suffer from what condition, resulting in important elements of each of the films' plot? This is insomnia. It is insomnia. Autism was a popular guess. Hmm. I I had quite a few people who who probably knew the answer. There's there's so much going on in the question that you you probably instantly know the answer, but you said the wrong word. So there are, I, I noticed that a couple of times where where, where, where see if you know the movies, the third movie is literally named Insomnia. So yeah, but the third one is the probably the least recognizable one among them. Uh, the others are very recognizable. You get excited and you say something very quickly. Mm. Yeah. And it might not be. Yeah. Narrator, some I think in my game someone answered like schizophrenia. Schizophrenia, yeah, yeah, same, exactly. Same, yeah. Yeah, someone yeah. answered uh, sleep apnea in my game, which is controversial. Answer awesome. question for you. Oh, this is a controversial one. In a 1957 film, Isuzu Yamada uses the Fukai mask as a reference for Eli Blank stare. Uh, in in a scene, this is the film adaptation's interpretation of which scene in the original Shakespeare play featuring the corresponding character? Many call it the out damned spot, which is extremely misleading. Scene. We need that one word that describes the character's actions in the play scene. Uh, this is uh, sleepwalking. It is uh, Lady Macbeth. So a I lot got of people... so many answers regarding they were they were washing something. washing hands. Yeah. Washing so out hand spot is exactly for the washing mm-hmm. hands. Yeah. It's not though. It's so see because there is a hand washing scene and there, because there is out damp spot. Therefore, you ah, assume that the two happen together. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't unfortunately. Uh, Lady Macbeth says out damp spot and she does it when she's not actually washing her hands. She's sleepwalking. Oh, okay. She's doing okay. this with her hands. You know because oh, she she see, thinks that she's got some stains on her, but you can't expect people to know this. This is I think this is just bad framing on our part. If you put something like this, it will make people go in the wrong direction. Um, the actual hint was eerie blank stare, which Italics could have saved us over here, but uh, but we didn't do that. Question nice for, question. Good question. Good question. Yeah. Again, 
watch this excerpt from a 2001 film which we will watch uh, real life sufferers are criticized for misrepresenting the condition for comic gain what condition is he shown to be suffering from from the greek for attack of stupor or sleep is that nice sleeping sleeping what well, he must be it's a rare sleeping disorder kaun uh, se this is uh, narcolepsy this narcolepsy once you know the answer is very obvious that that's what he's saying but we sleep can't hear it i had somebody ask me to replay it twice uh, mm-hmm. and i had to tell them at the second time that uh, bro yeah. i they deliberately blanked out yeah. <laughs> it's not a audio error <laughs> I, i i know this because of uh, modafinil abuse in my college hostel uh during my 12th uh wow, so, so, wow. can you explain that what what modafinil mod alert is a drug if you it's it's usually prescribed for narcolepsy patients oh, but uh, okay. if you take it uh, you will be alert for like 18 hours 20 hours so you can just like jab a lot of studies and it's over the counter like you can get it for wow. without a prescription so a lot of people in my college uh, like in my plus 2 college used to abuse it to study for iit wow. so that's how i knew this how many of them got into iit yeah <laughs> it is because of questions like this Student, that the drug is being don't ask it exit i mean realism question i didn't get into it so i should <laughs> speak for others maybe you should have taken it yeah maybe maybe so, so actually, quite possibly the only time that you would come across sleep swimming is in the trailer for 2016 sequel to 2003 film the titular character indulges in it as well as talking in her sleep and the trailer seems to suggest that this is the reason for this forgetful character having flashes that guide her towards discovering her origins the scene was edited out what is the title of the 2016 film uh this is uh, uh finding dory yes correct and this question was phrased beautifully very there, there beautiful are, there are quite yeah. a lot of clues back there there is i was yeah. it, it is quite impressive there's the sleep swimming there's titular character there is forgetful character um the timeline obviously helps uh, it doesn't say animated and a lot of people yeah, will not yeah. think of animated until you say animated so that is the only real uh, heading but uh, yeah, yeah i was going into all kinds of psychological thriller movies and thinking <laughs> which one had a th- sequel in 2016 <laughs> okay Very we nice have we have a bonus uh, vamsi question for you whether okay. this type of sleep order exists in real life is debatable but in this film it involves waking up in the middle of the night as one alter ego to put certain processes in motion then waking up in the morning as the other alter ego as a victim of those actions name this film whose title is itself the spoiler oh oh Question i have no on. idea but the same thing happens in uh, moon night also right oh, yeah maybe i don't know yeah uh, true true i don't know if this is obvious to others but now when i read a question i can tell who wrote it this is bruce written this question uh he's describing the plot in detail i didn't um, know that it's a uh... sleep disorder but yeah what's your answer pass this to sujit sujit i feel like what? you should have this oh then we can just bro's given a hint saying bollywood yeah that's why oh, i said sujit is the topic calling topic yes it is karthik calling karthik oh, calling karthik oh okay nice what you said bollywood itself as you can see the uh, out damn spot tripped up quite a few people <laughs> 191 attempts i'm surprised so many people got finding dory in most of the games i read that was missed mm-hmm. most of the games i read that was on they got it on the direct in my game yeah. oh, okay okay i won't be adding more people to the team you guys can now act as a team so we just april june and action typically used as an emergency oral anti poison remedy this term is also a mainstay in the black food trend being used in everything from soft serve ice creams to bottled water Um, the lightweight carbon residue it is obtained from is treated with oxygen at very high temperatures to make it more porous, as though it has been blanked for greater absorption. What item? The blank is part of the answer. This activated charcoal. That's correct. Okay. The second question: Native to Southern Europe, these highly expensive fungi are hunted using pigs and dogs. At which point you already have your guess ready. And selling at whopping prices of two thousand and to four thousand euros per kg, also known as tuber melanosporum. What is their common name? With the first part of the two-word answer, referencing its dark shade, at which you think, at which point you realize, oh, I need two words. Um, the lighter shade, however, is the more expensive one. So this is uh, black truffles. Somebody yes, gave our game kid 
dark truffles dark truffles night truffles because you had truffles till here but you had to give it a dark name unfortunately they're not they're not hunted using pigs anymore because I, yeah. so the original question like... the original question had pigs i added and dogs because i knew that the pigs thing had stopped yeah, yeah. they just eat it yeah pigs eat <laughs> it <laughs> they just eat <laughs> Uh, then maybe you can process their feces and get it as a more processed version. That's civet coffee. Popeluak. 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 So it is another popular ingredient in the black food trend. The substance is most commonly obtained from creatures under the cephalopod class. It has been used to add a blackish color and a unique flavor to food, and it is also a commercially important source of melanin. So it definitely belongs in the kitchen and not at your writing desk among stationery. What ingredient? Weeding made for that black Kobe burger. Black? So black Kobe burger or Kobe burger? It's uh-huh. something. It's a delicacy in uh, Kobe beef. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kobe. I think it's more famous for the squid ink pasta. Yeah, squid yeah. ink pasta is something pasta, I would have heard of. Especially in, uh, in Croatia, for some reason. Uh, question for Subhajit. Uh, this coloring ingredient is obtained from burning the husk of a tropical fruit after extracting the oil and water that it is more commonly used for. Originally used in Southeast Asia to make black ice cream, the black food trend has seen its usage spreading into cocktails, juices, and pizza. What ingredient, or more simply, which fruit? Coconut, coconut ash. This is a rare question, but I was genuinely hoping everybody would miss this. Uh, at least on the. But I had a because... mini heart attack here mm-hmm. that people use coconut on pizza. Uh, apparently, use the ash Pineapple to color the pizza. Yes. Pineapple. So, pizza. What surprised me over here was uh, oh, no. like, <laughs> tropical fruit and oil and water was a really direct hint, but yeah. people uh, saw the bird. Either they ignored the husk part, or they got just got confused by the presence of husk. Like they were they got confused by it. Mm-hmm. But this this is a very unique thing that the easiest question is least answered. Yeah, I mean, Actually, you, uh, uh, I like that you're using the word unique instead of just bad question. But yeah, it is it is a unique. Thing. Another, another <laughs> no spare question with is... kala khatta. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no, nothing like that. Uh, Abhishek, Pat, Nayan, and Hush, you are now attempting the hardest quad of our uh, quiz. Prior to the sixth oh, yeah. century AD, candle mass was traditionally considered the end of the Christmas season. But which day now defines the official end of the Christmas of the period known as Christmas Tide? This is essentially the E of the epiphany, beyond which it is considered unlucky to leave decorations hanging. We are looking for the descriptive phrase. This was added after the first quiz where somebody gave me the exact date. They said 5th January. So I said, descriptive phrase, not an exact. <laughs> this is yeah, I have no clue and I don't remember now either. 12th night. 12th night, right. And incidentally, we couldn't accept the date because uh, there are multiple definitions depending on whether you start from Christmas or, or a different date. It could be 5th January or 6th January. Both are called 12th night in different cultures. Um, question for Abhishek, Pat, Nayan, and Hush. A common tradition observed during the 12th night is the consumption of what cake, often with a figurine representing the baby Jesus hidden inside. It gets its name from a term used for the collective of Melchior, Balthazar, and Gaspard, who came to Jesus to offer him gifts. As an additional clue, the year 1066 was the year of the blank blank in England, the same term that we're looking for here. This is the three kings. Three kings. This is three kings kick. I, I, I in was one thinking place, of I had uh, three wise men. Because yeah. one said yeah. three wise men, another one, I prompted them, they didn't answer. The second one said three mega. And uh, <laughs> uh, the, the third one said three wise kings. And... Uh, like or, or three wise mega or something of that sort. So I had to then finally tell them what the real answer was. Mm-hmm. Your third question. In order to protect their houses from evil spirits and receive blessings from God, what common activity do practicing Christians undertake on the 12th night over the doors or lintels of their house? While a wreath is hung during Christmas season, this particular activity is more associated with the 12th night exclusively. This is marking the door with chalk and writing the year plus CMB. He is right. And I will show uh, you. I just how... wanted to clarify, like from I, I did a preliminary Google search, and it said the CMB stands for the three wise, the three wise men, the three kings. Yes. But uh, no, here edition. it stands for something else. Here it stands for a Latin phrase which means "bless this dwelling." Oh. Yeah. So there, there are multiple explanations. It says uh, the CMB. One second. I um, can't see it anymore. Yeah, letter uh, CMB. Uh, if you can look at this, in the, the search itself, it wrote CMB was for... So it, I got right. confused. Is it Casper or is it Gaspar? Yeah, so I, I'm sure there are there are multiple spellings, but that's one definition. Okay, the, the, okay. It comes from the names of the wise men. It's also the Latin phrase is the other definition. Uh, one of the okay. few, very few people got this question right, by the way. And one of the people, uh, Shithir, yeah. I don't know if he's on the call, but he got this right thanks to, have, uh, thanks to seeing this post 
on Reddit in which okay. somebody had asked, there is a mathematical expression over some of the doors. What does it mean? It's, <laughs> uh, it's the symbols are the same. Yo. It's 20 into C plus M plus B plus 20. And she said had come across this and he therefore knew that this was... Uh, this was Very nice. This okay. was fun. Yeah. Uh, question, fourth question for the team. In order to bless the trees to produce good crop in the forthcoming season, what activity is undertaken at Cider Orchards in Southern England on the 12th night? The devotees go with the titular bowl to the orchard sing songs and even lay out bread to the tree. A non-orchard version of this activity also existed across England that later evolved into caroling. This is wassailing. Wassailing is right. And this is how that played. 1.5%. Three people only. Impressive. We haven't seen unanswered questions all season and they've become exceedingly rare. It, it is not a sign of good questions. It is just a sign that if you have 250 people, it's very difficult to come up with something that nobody knows. So on, at least one person will always get it, no matter how terrible the question. And just um, for clarification purposes, uh, would, would should we have given a correct to somebody who just said chalking on the door or chalk marking the door with chalk? Yeah, chalking yes. the door is the answer. That, that, is, yeah. that is precisely the answer. I mean, nothing the so he said red chalk, if I'm not wrong. So I just gave it to him. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah, that's I guess word yeah. chalk is enough in this case. Correct. Yeah, that, that's what I gave it to him on. We, we Chalk do is have, in capitals, so take it here. We do have a bonus, although I don't know if this will work because I just saw the answer. We'll see what happens. Uh, it is considered bad luck to leave decoration, Christmas decorations beyond the 12th night. So one tradition on that day is to remove the decorations. Those who don't observe this tradition typically keep the decorations till February 1st, the eve of which other festival? Is that candle oh. not Saturday, no? It is candle mass. Ah, it was uh, it was actually mentioned in another question. Yeah, four step or something, no? Yeah. Okay, and I think we're on to our last call. Uh, this yes. is the night off, um, and this is for Rishi Kiran Shamat and Vamsi. This influential 1968 George Romero film is credited with giving birth to the zombie apocalypse. Not actually the apocalypse, to the genre of zombie apocalypse. Uh, before it, zombies were usually depicted as creatures of voodoo who obeyed their masters. Romero chose not to give an explanation for the existence at all, save that they were reanimated corpses with an insatiable appetite for human flesh. Which movie? Night, Night of the, the Living Dead. That's correct. It's, it's not the night, if you notice. It's just night. So it doesn't yeah. really fit into the book. Question. Yeah. Uh, this 1955 thriller, based on a novel by Davis Grubb, features a serial killer who poses as a preacher to seduce and rob an unsuspecting widow. It received poor reviews upon release, but is now considered one of the greatest films ever made. Which film, which remains the only feature film directed by Charles Lott? Night of the Hunter. Night of the Hunter is right. Is there a conscious decision to black out the second the of the name? Yeah, or I, is it... I, I thought it would be fun to, uh, to to give you two questions to where you don't know that it's night. And then in your third question, the image itself will acknowledge that the quad is called the night. Uh, I don't know if it went anywhere. It, I didn't really change any results or anything, but I thought it'd be an interesting thing to try out. Um, this 1964 film, based on a 1961 Tennessee Williams play, tells the story of a disgraced minister turned Mexican tour bus driver who is, Mexican is surprisingly important in this question, who is blackmailed by a passenger. The titled reptile's role in the story is purely symbolic. It is captured by, by some of the characters early on and tied to a veranda to be fattened for eating, but is later unexpectedly released, reflecting the story arc of the protagonist as well. What is the title of the film? Night of the Iguana. Yes, correct. And I like this poster because it showed me uh, Richard Burton as he was when he was much younger. I've, I've always seen him in movies where he's much older and I've never really liked him. So now I understand why he might have become a star. <laughs> <laughs> and I think this should be the last question unless we have a bonus. Oh, we do have a bonus. But firstly, oh, nice. the last question of the quiz of, of our set. Uh, this 2016 American crime drama series stars Des Emmert as a college student named Nas, who is accused of murder. Much of the plot around uh, revolves around Naz's alibi or lack thereof. So, what is the title of the series? Your answer might leave this squad feeling a bit incomplete. The Night Off. It's the name of the quad. It is uh, The Night Off. Hey, but I, I, I really felt bad that you did not mention the awesome BBC series here. I don't hey, know what you're talking about. I don't know what the awesome BBC series is. Hugh Laurie with Hugh Laurie. Oh, okay. Is it, is it also called The Night Off? Yeah, yeah. No, there's also one more series with called Night Off, no? Oh, yeah, um, that's the Emmert, and there's the Indian one. That oh. the Indian one is called Criminal Justice. No, no, it's Indian one is called Night Manager. It has uh, got uh, Night Manager was from last week's that yeah. 
So yeah. Nine Mile is an Indian Nine Mile is a separate Night of is Criminal Justice, which are Jackie Shroff in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Oh. And uh, we do have a bonus for this one. This is the last quiz, uh, last question that we're looking at today. Um, in which Nisim is equal poem, which you who you, you may remember from a previous season of Basic Front Two, does the protagonist remember the time that his mother was a victim to a creature parting with his poison? Flash of diabolical tale in the dark room. The Night of the Scorpion. Night of the Scorpion yes. is right. So this is uh, ICSE, ICSE Golden Lair book. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Oh, <laughs> also, also CBSC in some class at some point. Okay. Uh, and that completes our quiz. Uh, I'm putting a feedback link in the chat. If anybody feels up to it, please, please put something in. Uh, the more you tell us about what you liked and what you didn't like, the better future quads will, uh, future questions hopefully can be. Um, so this is our theme set. There will not be another one this season. This is our theme set for the season. Uh, I hope oh, you like okay. it. And, oh. uh, and oh, I thought it was going to start a trend from now on. Uh, no, every set can't be themed. We'll die. So you can do that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I missed that question. How do you pronounce that Hawaiian dress? Is it... Uh, I've just, I've just been saying Momo. I don't know. Yeah, oh, look I at this timing, like it... man. Look, guys, look at this timing. 10 seconds to go. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, I know. I tried so hard to make us go beyond. I, I noticed, Kiran, if I may say so. I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, folks. See you next time. Um, thank, thank you. you. See you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.